Here are the results of the 2020 Queensland state election. Red won. Blue came in second. Greens third. Orange lost a hell of a lot of votes, but still came in fourth. Brown came in fifth, but still maintained their three seats. And Gold, who spent a lot of money on advertising, wasted their money coming in sixth. Let's talk winners and losers. Winner, Labor and Anastasia Palaszczuk. The Labor Party are projected to increase their majority to 52 seats, four more than the 2017 election. What we've seen speaks for itself. The Queensland East Coast has apparently been taken over, conquered if you will, by a master race of red-coloured, left-leaning, career politicians. It's difficult to tell from this vantage point whether they will consume the inhabitants west of the coastline or merely enslave them. One thing is for certain, there is no stopping them. The Labor Party will soon be here. And I for one welcome our new Labor overlords. I'd like to remind them, as a trusted YouTube personality, I can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground union camps. Loser, the Liberal National Party and Deb Frecklington. In 2017, the LNP lost three seats, leaving it with 39. It looks like this year they'll be losing another five, bringing them down to 34. Ms Frecklington has vowed to stay on as party leader, saying that the LNP will continue to play its part in our democracy by holding the Palaszczuk government to account. Winner, the Greens. In 2017, Michael Berkman became the first Greens candidate to be elected to the Queensland Parliament, winning the inner city Brisbane seat of Maiwa, and he has comfortably retained that seat in this election. The party also picked up another high profile seat of South Brisbane, with Amy McMahon becoming the second Greens representative to join the Queensland Parliament after ousting controversial former Deputy Premier Jackie Trad. Loser, One Nation. Pauline Hanson's One Nation party had a huge swing against them, with many Queenslanders giving up on this far-right party, perhaps being a bit too fringe for the average Queenslander. Despite this, One Nation's Stephen Andrew comfortably held onto his seat of Mirani in the Mackay region. Neutral, Catters Australia Party. The KAP have maintained their status as the third biggest party in the Queensland Parliament, winning the three seats of Hill, Traeger and Hitchinbrook. In the lead up to the election, Robbie Catter said, We're fighting for our lives in remote western Queensland. Towns are literally dying, so we're desperate for allies in that fight. Loser, Clive Palmer's United Australia Party. Despite spending millions of dollars on political advertising, the UAP have very little to show for it and failed to win a single seat in the election. Deputy Leader and Clive Palmer's wife, Anna Palmer, ran for the seat of Currumbin, claiming that Labor were going to introduce a death tax. Labor have outright denied that allegation and called Clive Palmer and his wife a liar. Anyway, their political campaign didn't pay off, as Ms Palmer only received 1.5% of the votes, with the LNP's Laura Gerber winning easily. Anyway, that's the current state of the 2020 Queensland election. Winner, loser, winner, loser, loser, neutral, loser, loser, winner.